Hello my fellow book addicts, Megan here, and time for another book view. Today, I'm going to be talking about The Iron Warrior by Julie Kagawa, and this is the final book in the Call of the Forgotten series, and in the Iron Face series in general. So this book was very easily one of my most anticipated books of 2015. Easy. Easy top five. Even top three. And I was both extremely excited and extremely sad to know that this book was coming out. Because this book is the physical reminder that this is the last book in one of my favorite series. So yeah, it was very, very sad to know that this series was ending. Because I'm very fond of the world and the characters. So knowing that I'm not getting any more of them after this broke my little heart. So, what can I say about this book? Well, I greatly enjoyed it. I, I was actually right about a lot of the character deaths that I predicted. They didn't die necessarily the way I thought they would. Which is a good thing, because it's no fun being right in all your predictions. You know, it's nice to be caught off guard here or there. And I will say, the ending did make me tear up. Like, seriously, the feels the feels. You know, I was happy with how things wrapped up and all in all I thought it was a very enjoyable read. I wouldn't, as much as I liked it, I wouldn't necessarily rank it as my favorite in the series. That still I believe goes to the Iron Knight. But you know, all in all things were wrapped up well and for a series ending, it was good. It was really good. I was happy with it. I still want more mind you, but I thought things ended at a good point. With all that said, I'm going to go into a slightly more spoilery bit and go in more depth of what I liked and what just blew me away. So yeah, if you have not read The Iron Warrior yet, I suggest you click away now and come back after you read the book. So yeah, throughout most of the book, I wanted to strangle Karen. I'm sure that's no surprise to anyone and I'm pretty sure most of the fandom feels the same way. Like, it broke my heart for Megan and Ash, especially, to see Kieran. Especially when Megan had to, like, totally banish Kieran, totally strip him of his titles, and declare him a traitor to the Never Never. Like, my heart went out to her for that. Ethan, we start the book off with Ethan waking up. He's been in, like, a coma for, I believe it was a month in fairy time. And it equaled out to three months in the human world. And basically, he did die. His heart did stop beating at some point after Karen stabbed him. In the veil between the human world and Never Never did crumble. All humans, both sighted and not, were able to see the fae and half-breeds for what they really were. For, I think it was like an hour or a half hour. Which was just chaos. But, Ethan obviously didn't stay dead for long. His heart did start beating. You know, thanks to the amulet that girl gave him. It literally saved his life. And once Ethan came back, he his heart started beating again and he was no longer officially dead. The veil went back up and reformed. You know, soon after, humans forgot what happened. So yeah, soon after Ethan wakes up, Megan and Ash have to go to meet with the other rulers, and Ethan tags along because he insists, and <laughs> they're trying to decide what to do. And you know, it's pretty clear they're going to have to go to war with the Forgotten. We do see Karen at that meeting. He comes under the banner of Truce. Well, not Truce, necessarily. I can't remember the details of that. But he came to offer the Forgotten Queen's terms, which, you know, were, uh, she wanted the summer and winter courts to step down and have it become one big court. Since the Iron Realm is kind of poison to traditional Fae, you know, there's not really much Forgotten Queen can do about that. But she wants Megan to swear in lines to her. And it's just, they're like, no. Just no. And that's where Megan has to officially declare Kieran a traitor. And like I said, my heart went out to her for that. Ash is determined not to accept that thing that looks like Karen is Karen. He 
know something is up. And that's when Ethan tells Ash about the amulet that Kieran was using to keep Anwul alive. Basically, our little gang is now going to try and find a way to get Kieran to destroy the amulet. In order to destroy the amulet that's sucking away his glamour, Kieran has to be the one to destroy it on his own free will. And I like that little twist, you know, it couldn't just be anyone to destroy it, it had to be Kieran. So you know this is going to be a huge deal. Either he's going to destroy it or they're going to have to kill him because he'll be beyond hope. He'll be beyond saving. Just so much and so many feels. I was shocked by one part, especially in this book. And that's when Mab actually stops Titania from killing Kieran. And god, I wish I could remember the exact quote she had. She, it was something along the lines of her not letting her kill the blood of her blood. For better or for worse, Kieran is her grandson. So I was just so shocked when Mab did that. Like, oh my god. It just... I wasn't expecting that, and I actually really enjoyed that. I also loved when our little gang of the Thin Man, Anwol, Ethan, Kenzie, Razor, Grimalkin, the Big Bad Wolf, I was happy to see him again, Puck and Ash go into the between to try and find Kieran and the fun and try and save Kieran. I love the little adventures there, especially with the circus. So, the showdown with Karen. Oh. My goodness. <laughs> Things were looking extremely dicey for a while. Karen was just... He was not the goofball we met in The Lost Prince. This was a totally different guy. He, want, he was refusing to destroy the amulet. He almost killed everybody. He almost killed Ethan again. And he basically was going to force Ethan to let him kill him or, you know, threaten Kenzie. When, and when Annie Anwell stepped in and she just started, you know, using glamour like no other. She's been holding back a lot because she didn't want to drain Kieran faster and risk, you know, killing him sooner. When it got to the point where it seems like he was at the point of no return, her just suddenly draining him away. Oh my god. For a while, I honestly thought that was going to be the end. I honestly thought that's how Kieran was going to die. But when Kieran almost tries to kill Enwil instead to save his own hide, I swear my heart stopped. Ethan manages to get her out of the way. And, oh god, I gotta backtrack because I can't believe I forgot to mention this. Ethan's attitude change towards glamour and magic was awesome. Like, I thought that was a great bit of development. Ethan agrees to be basically blessed by the Never Never. And it makes him immune to both winter and summer magic. He's not immune to iron glamour, sadly, but, you know, two out of three isn't bad. And he kind of needs it when fighting Kieran, because Kieran can use all three glamours. Kieran is apparently very slow and doesn't realize that he's only used two glamours against Ethan so far. But when he's trying to kill Anwul, it's revealed to him that Karen is not immune to Iron Glamour. With a wave of triumph, Karen tries to kill Ethan with Iron Glamour. But, you know, it can't be that easy. Uh, Anwul took the blow for Ethan. She was basically killed by Karen. <laughs> you know, I figured she was going to die just because she was so close to the Fade. You know, didn't think there was much saving her. And she's lying there, dying, and Karen gets snapped out of it by this. He realizes, oh my god, what have I done? And it, it's sad that it took that much of a blow for him to snap out of it. You know, as Edwin was lying there, dying, she has no hard feelings for him, but she has one dying request for Karen to destroy the amulets. And he does. So Karen gets his soul back, and that's when just the waterworks started to go flowing. All the tears. <laughs> and I liked how the Forgotten Queen was killed. The Thin Man was killed during this. 
by the way. He was killed by the Forgotten Queen. So yeah, the Forgotten actually kill the Forgotten Queen. They suck away her glamour until she is gone. So I like that. I honestly thought it'd be Karen or Ethan who killed the Forgotten Queen. So I like that little twist. And the reunion between Ash, Karen, and Megan had tears flowing again. I was just starting to calm down and the tears started going again. And of course, you know, Titania is just like, we have to punish him. He was a traitor. That, the punishment for that is banishment, you know, exile, or death. And you know, I think she was leaning towards wanting death. Because she's like that. Everyone else is kind of hesitant. Thankfully, Grimalkin, being the amazing cat that he is, hin heavily hints at a solution. The Forgotten don't have a ruler anymore. Someone needs to keep them in line. And Karen can walk between the veil. He's more or less the only person who can do that. But yeah, Karen is exiled from the Never Never, which is sad. But you know what? He becomes the Forgotten King. The ruler of the Forgotten. The protector of the veil. And I don't think the banishment was permanent. You know, I think it's just for him to redeem himself. But even if it was permanent, you know, it's a pretty good solution. And Karen is happy to take this mantle up. He wants to prove himself and show that he wants to right the wrongs that he committed. And he's taking this pretty well. And he's actually excited for this chance to redeem himself. And then that epilogue. That epilogue. You know, I started to calm down again. And the tears started streaming again. The whole end of this book just had me crying waterfalls of tears. We cut ahead a bit. Ethan is packing a move. He, I guess, officially dropped out of school. Got his GED. And he wants to go somewhere where no one knows him. Somewhere where he isn't followed by whispers and rumors of being that delinquent kid. He wants to start over. And good news, Kenzie is, has been declared in remission. Kenzie and her dad are getting along better. They're actually talking things out more, which is awesome to hear. And, you know, things are looking good. Then we end the book with Ethan and his parents getting a surprise visitor. Megan shows up on their doorstep. And, of course, Megan's mom and Ethan's mom, really, are absolutely happy to see her. Because it's been a while. And with her is Karen. She's finally introducing her son to her parents. So, yeah, Megan brings Karen inside and it's just like... Mom, I think it's about time you meet your grandson. And once again, the tears start a flowing. And that's where we end things. And just tears. Tears and snot and just feelings. So yeah, we're at the end of the Iron Fae series. And it's sad. And I do want more. I want more of this universe. It doesn't necessarily have to be the characters we've been sticking with. But, part of me wishes we had more. And I'd be totally open for more spin-offs. I'm just stating that now as a fan. I would love more spin-offs. But yeah, all in all, that was a good way to wrap the series up. It ended on a nice happy note. You know, things worked out. And I like that. All in all, like I said, this was a good wrap up to the series. And for an ending, I greatly enjoyed it. You know, no complaints. So, yeah. That's it for this book review, and I hope to see you guys next time. Keep on reading, my fellow book addicts. Keep on reading.